Good morning, afternoon, evening, lovely friends. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Um, oh my goodness, this is turning into an absolute cliche of a British summer. Rain, 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 dry day, sunny, really quite hot. Rain, rain, rain. I wasn't supposed to be here today, but <clears throat> it looks like this is my only dry day in a few days. So I've rearranged life again, <laughs> put today's stuff into another day just so I can come down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got quite the little list of jobs to do. Most of them are quite small jobs. And I was kind of thinking about the plot in general and these jobs. And I'm hoping after the jobs I do today, that I'll kind of be on top of things in terms of with plants, at any rate, for a little while. Which would be great, because then I can turn my attention to various matters of maintenance. The shed needs painting, I need to do a bit of a sort out on the path that's behind my fence, or a little communal path between um, this bottom neighbour and myself. So that'd be great. I'm hoping to just crack through and get this lot done today. Then, <laughs> I've got it here to remind me, um, this is one of these, these silicone uh, pot dishwashing things, you know, for doing your washing your dishes. Uh, it's superfluous. Is that the right word? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, don't know where I'm at, at today. It's superfluous to my needs at home. It was in my Christmas stocking from my mum. So I suddenly thought, oh, I know, I'll bring it to the garden because for the last few weeks, my table, even the chair outside my shed, it's just been a mass of trays and pots where I've been planting up the garden since the beginning of June, so ooh, yeah, it's been going on a month. They've just been getting dumped there. Um, grubby, there's probably some slugs and snails hiding in them all. So I want to give them all a wash out, a dry, and then get them stashed away in the shed again until next year. In the past, I've always taken them home to do, um, but <laughs> I still haven't fixed my sink. Oh, I know, I know. It's just time. So I thought, you know what, just do them here. Yeah, the water will be cold, um, but do it on a warm day, it won't matter. So yes, this is now my designated pot and tray and cell scrubber. Good. I don't know if I'll get time to do that today, but at least that's down here now. I'll put it on my potting bench and it'll be a visual reminder to jolly well get on and do it oh and also when I do the shed I've had this waiting for ages this is from Julie another little lovely um, metal sign for either the shed or the fence haven't decided where thank you Julie I think that was at Christmas wasn't it this year is flying isn't it absolutely flying I want I really want things to slow down a bit um, it's one of the reasons I'd like to crack on today is because then I just want days in the garden or afternoons or mornings where it really is a much, much more gentle pace where I can just sit and enjoy the summer because it won't be here forever. So, um, yeah, all sorts to do today, but I, I've got myself a little list and on the top of it, a note to remind me to talk to you about something which I completely, and I'm so sorry, forgot to update everybody on. It must have been about the middle of May, towards the end of May. I think the reason it slipped my mind to talk about it was just because in May I was just like, get the beds done, get the beds done, get the beds done, get the beds done. I was on a mission. The horse poo experiment. So I got all that horse poo delivered, I think it was the end of February. Then of course I was kind of AWOL for the whole of March. Came down, had an early session at the beginning of April and then I was AWOL for the next two weeks of April as well. One of the things I did right back at the beginning of April was I got a nice big pot, I scooped up a load of the horse poo and I sewed directly into it three gigantes beans. 
the reason for doing that was because having had all that lovely horse poo delivered, I suddenly got nervous about the possibility that it might contain a herbicide called amino pylorid. I think that's the name. Uh, it's a herbicide which is used on grains, grains and grasses. So in a, in a huge field of, say, grass that's been grown for hay, it will be sprayed on that field ugh, to kill off all weeds, but it doesn't affect the grasses and the grains. Now, the problem with that is that then the horses either get to eat the hay or that straw is used as bedding in their stalls. So when we get our lovely well-rotted horse poo, there can be trace of that herbicide in the poo. The, 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 main, the main thing it affects, so if you had that poo and it was contaminated, you would be okay, for instance, to grow sweet corn. Or flint corn because they're from the family that the herbicide doesn't affect but it does affect in particular squash tomatoes and beans so all those crops that we want to give extra manure to because they're quite greedy they're the ones they affect so that's why I chose to plant some beans at the beginning of April because I was doing it outside hey buddy in case you're wondering what all that noise was it's mr. rusty here having a chow down and a purr. It really is the loudest purr, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, so it was too early and there's going to be a fight now because Poppy's in the other corner. If you're going to fight you two, please don't scratch my back. That's Poppy. She's off. Rusty's like, yeah, you got the place back to myself. Um, yeah, by doing it at the beginning of April, it was too early for me to put, say, squash seeds in or tomatoes. It would have been too cold for them to come to anything because I was doing it outside. So that's why I chose to do the beans. The beans came up and their first leaves unfurled. Beautiful. Their seed leaves came first, obviously. Then their first two leaves unfurled beautifully. And I looked online to see the effect of this amino pylorid. On, on the plants and one of the things that's really apparent is this sort of leaf curl, a general stunted growth and leaf curl and then I think eventually the plant just gives up and dies. So I was delighted to see that there was no leaf curl. I think this was about mid-May so I was already thinking ahead into June that yeah I would be happy to plant my squash into it. Meanwhile a number, a great number of my neighbours had already spread out their poo way back in March. They'd already planted and sown those beds. So I was keeping an eye on those beds as well. And I could see that, you know, everything was coming up. Um, one of my neighbours had planted his tomatoes out really quite early. He planted them, oh, it was nearly the beginning of May. He'd covered them to give them a bit of warmth. But they were out and they were in the horse poo. And they were doing okay too. So it was about the middle of May I thought, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to keep an eye on this pot of beans anyway. Because at that stage it was a bit too early to tell whether this, the growth was going to be stunted. There was no leaf curl. So I was going to keep an eye on it. And then one night, the slugs at the lot. The beans were gone completely. Um, so... In terms of that experiment, it wasn't definitive. However, by that first week of June, when I was getting ready to plant out my squash and tomatoes and what have you, the tomatoes aren't in it. It's in, it's just in the squash beds. Is that two? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's in the five squash beds. By the beginning of June, where other folk had planted into it already, I could see they had really, really good growth from their plants. So I thought, okay, take the plunge, use it. And so far, so good. Yay! Right, so we're up to date on the horse poo thing. And I'm really, really sorry that I forgot to talk about it back in May. Uh, I think literally it was a case of once the slugs had had the beans away, and I was so focused on getting the rest of the garden done, it just completely slipped my mind. 
apologies we're up to date now so looking at my list of jobs to do i think i think we're going to start outside the shed while it's dry i'm going to harvest something and i want it dry there is a slight risk of showers later so yeah while it's dry let's do some harvesting goodness me so in the blue pot here this is my lemon balm and <laughs> it has become a monster i'm sure because of all the rain right let's step in and get snipping so yeah it's absolutely massive and what's more so i want to get it quite a bit down because then i want to work out what's going on with the the little rose cutting from Paul that I planted which is now kind of heading that way I want to get it just tied in to this um, front post encourage it the way I'd like it to go likewise with the honeysuckle so there's only one thing for it just get snipping I'm gonna snip it back quite hard I think honestly this rain it's made everything go bonkers yeah, I'm going to snip it back quite hard. I think I might actually want my secateurs. I mean, it'll bounce back really quite quickly. Let me get my secateurs. Secateurs, secateurs. Yeah, it's, it'll bounce back and it'll come back really quick. Oh, I need to, I need to clean and oil my, um, my secateurs. My rocking bit of it hold on yes. oh it's seized up they need a clean they've they've been in constant use so they've not had a chance right i'll use my fake fake hose yeah just gonna hack it hack 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 and like i said in a few weeks it will bounce back and i'll get another harvest It'll be a bit of an ugly hack today. I just want to get the, this mass of material down considerably. Oh, I wish you could smell it. I wish you could smell it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let me just put it on that chair for now. All right, Poppy. Poppy's on the table. Rusty's on the next door shed stoop here. And then quite simply, all I'll do is I'm going to tie this in bundles in, with, just with string, hang them upside down in the shed to dry, to dry, to dry, to dry. And then opla, once they're thoroughly dry, I'll sort of shred them up a bit, chop them up. And then, well, they'll go into an airtight jar for me to use over the coming weeks. That will do for now. Let's go and tie these up in the shed and then I'll talk to you about how I use it. Them, it, <laughs> them. Some of you who've been watching for a while will know all about the onion drying rack. Anyone who's slightly new to the channel This is my onion drying rack. I call it my onion drying rack because I built it specifically for, there's a sort of a wire mesh over a frame. I built it specifically for drying onions so that I could take, if this is the bulb of the onion and the foliage, turn it upside down, poke the foliage through the mesh, onion sits on top, warm dry in here great air circulation perfect for drying onions however over the years how long have i had it now four years five years when did i build it about four years ago i think it was i think it was four years ago this summer um oopla you see this is what i'm going to have to remember now is to not bang my head on it 
it's just proved really, really useful for so many jobs. So for example, nice big bunch of lemon balm. Tie it, ordinary string, nothing fancy. Tie it quite tightly because as they dry they will shrink. So it's just been, just tied it with a little bit of string left either end. And that string, oh, I put it too far back, it's awkward. I need my little steppy stool for that. I can do it at the front though. String through the wire. Quick little knot. The first of the harvest to dry. I'll do most of them at the back end though, so there's still room for me to sit. Now in terms of um yeah, let me let me just get these tied but not hung while I'm chatting to you. In terms of use. Well, first of all, this smell is already gorgeous. When I come back to my shed the next time, it will be amazing. It's just going to smell of lemon balm. Mm -mm -mm. So I use it mainly in the bathroom. I like it as a hair rinse. Hang on a sec. Actually, I don't think I can do two things at once. <laughs> Let me talk about this sitting down. That's a happy sight. Yay! Right, now let's quickly talk about lemon balm and how I use it, other uses. So, like I said, mainly I use it in the bathroom as a hair rinse. It's great. It's got astringent properties to it. So it's great if you've got greasy hair, as I have. Um, so, like I said, this will all dry. I'll chop it up a bit finer and then it'll go into airtight jars and then when I want to use it I just use a sort of a, a sort of scoopy handful into my teapot make a pot of tea from it let that cool somewhat strain it off and then use that as a final rinse when I've washed my hair a um, couple of things it helps to just get rid of any soapy residue that might be left but also like I said it's got that astringent property to it so it's it's good at getting rid of that horrible oiliness also if you've got really oily skin it's really nice as a face steam so again a handful scooby handful into a bowl of water actually you know when it's dry it's not really it's hard to explain it's not a handful it's more like about half a cup whereas with the fresh stuff you would use more maybe a cup just because it's obviously it's bulkier when it's fresh yeah into a bowl of hot water that is slightly steaming pop your face over it with your towel have a nice really cleansing steam with it uh, likewise use it in the bath for the same reason if you're going to use it in the bath just put it in a little muslin bag I like to hang my muslin bag on the hot tap as the hot water is running and it's helping to ooh, get all those oils infuse the water yum 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 it's actually i had to look this up i didn't know it's actually part of carmelite water so some of you may use that in your bath already but yeah lemon balm is in that um in terms of taking it internally for things i don't normally there's a lot of the stuff in the garden in terms of the herbs. I tend to use them in the bathroom on the outside. You can make a tea from it and it's good for sort of chesty stuff, that kind of Qatari when you're feeling clogged up on your chest. So you can take it as a tea for that, but also a steam for that would be really good. Uh, probably some of you use it in different ways. There are all sorts of different ways. And it's one of the beautiful things about having herbs in our garden, isn't it? We all use them differently. Some of us use them for exactly the same reasons, but also use them for other things that I don't do with them. The point is this, if, if you've got a herb in your garden and you've found a lovely way to use it, hair rinse, great. If you use it for a tea, great. 
it's just lovely to have these beautiful, vibrant, really gorgeously vigorous plants in our garden which we can then harvest and use at home for things other than food because most of the garden is about food. Just to, a note actually having said about their vigour, I've got mine in a pot outside the shed as you've just seen. The reason for that is they can go rampant just like mint. If you're going to grow lemon balm do it in a pot otherwise it will take over your whole garden. Right, <laughs> Miss Poppykins, are you happy there? Now that that's cleared out of the way, I can go and just sort out what's going on with this little rose cutting, give it some tying in. So, here, where have you gone to? Yeah, here's the rose. That's one bit, and there's another little section here which I'm just going to tie in. The honeysuckle, it's putting out one coming forwards here, but I don't know if you can make out this one. It's actually started twining itself. Brilliant. When did I put these in? I think it was... <clears throat> it was about the middle of May, maybe the third week of May. I had my little sort of flower sorting day as a break from all the bed prep. So I think they've done great in that time. Not too, I'm not going to tie it too tightly. Now, that will do. The rose, of course, will need tying because it's got no. It doesn't have tendrils to put out and grab onto things. They, it's not like, say, our, our climbing beans and our climbing squash, that sort of thing. So it will need a bit of help. I'm going to guide this over here. The honeysuckle doesn't really need tying in per se because it will, it will twist and climb but I'm just going to tie it in a little bit just to encourage it to go in the direction that I would like it to go. Little self-seeded Alison. Where shall I put you? I think there. Yes, yeah, so I'm delighted with how they've done in, what, about five weeks or so they've done this. Now, they are, obviously they're going to grow. And like I said at the time, I've got them in this trough, which is really quite small for such plants. But I don't want them to get massive. Um, I want them to sort of fill out, bush out down here. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be regularly cutting out the growing tips of them so that they don't take over the whole of the top of the shed. I want them to get up to the sort of the eaves and then stop. Good. Well, it's nice to see, it's nice to see that again after a few weeks of not seeing it because of the lemon, ver um, I was going to call it the bean of the lemon balm. At the end of the season with the lemon balm, it will sort of die back in so much as it will get sort of dry and twiggy and what have you. And then literally all I do at the end of the season when it is like that, I just cut it all off, level with the top of the pot. That's it, I don't do anything else with it. I don't feed it. I do water it sometimes if we've been really dry, but otherwise, wow, it just grows and grows and grows. Lucky me. Okay, and now we need to do a job at the top of the garden. I'm back. <laughs> I just realized actually, just talking about the lemon balm, all this, uh, this video is going to be longer than I thought, so let's leave the lemon balm alone here as a standalone video. I'll do the parsnips in another video. Um, just one more thing about the lemon balm that I forgot to say as well in terms of taking it as a tea. Here's the wonderful thing. It can be incredibly calming, but also uplifting. So it's uplifting, but not in a kind of crazy euphoric way just just that 
nice gentle lift of mood whilst calming things down. Lovely. And of course, if you haven't got lemon balm in your garden, lemon balm essential oil is really very easy to get hold of. So you could always put a couple of drops in your oil burner to have that same effect in the home of that kind of calm but uplifting mood. And of course, it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous, clean scent in the air anyway. Uh, so yeah, if you're not growing any this year, try some essential oil in a burner. Uh, if you fancy having a go, do. It's ridiculously easy to grow. This came from a nursery a few years ago. I bought a whole lot of organic herbs, treated myself. Aunt Teapot had given me, um, instead of an Easter egg, she gave me some money for plants because she knew I'd rather have plants than chocolate. Uh, and it was that one company that was just a total disaster. Everything was so smashed and half dead on arrival. The lemon balm was also smashed and half dead, but it came back and not half. The reason I'm saying that now is to, to sort of show you what an incredibly easy plant it is to grow. It's dead easy. It's a gorgeous burst of green. It's useful at home, but please do. If you're going to buy a plant and have it in your garden, put it in a pot. All right, my lovelies, I'm going to say cheerio to you all now. Um, and I'll see you again really soon, because now I'm going to get on with doing the parsnips and I'll bring that to you in the next video, along with some other bits and pieces. But for now, cheerio.